Hey everyone, welcome back to Ask Amy. Today we have a question from Nancy, and um, it's a great question that I know a lot of people can relate to because I get a lot of different versions of this same question, which is along the lines of, how do I share this with my fill in the blank? So Nancy's asking about her daughter, but people are always asking like, how do I, from what I'm learning here in these Ask Amy's, from the articles I write, from maybe your own studies of the three principles, you know, how do I share this? How do I use this to help this other person in my life? Or how can I talk about it with so-and-so? And, and it's like anything. I mean, this conversation is no different than any other conversation. It's very different. <laughs> it's very different from a lot of other conversations in, in many ways. But at the same time, it's also just a conversation. So I think what happens, you know, is we, we have a lot of thinking about it and we think, oh, this is different. And what if they don't see it? And what if I don't explain it well? And we get a little caught up innocently in our own thinking about it. And so this conversation can look different or it can look like it has some challenges that maybe others don't. So let me read Nancy's question and then we'll, we'll get into this. So Nancy says, um, my daughter's a psych major at school. She sees a regular psychologist and psychiatrist and thinks I don't understand mental illness. How do I encourage her to open her mind and read your weekly messages? So let me take a second and, and talk about how traditional psychology tends to see this. So this is not about Nancy's daughter. I don't know Nancy's daughter or how she sees things, but let me just kind of go there for a second. So in general, um, most traditional psychology is kind of coming from a disease model, kind of like a medical model, right? So all of these different branches of psychology, and there are lots and lots, hundreds and hundreds of them, they're pretty much all looking at either our thoughts, our feelings, or our behavior, or some combination of those. So there's like cognitive behavioral therapy, looks at thoughts and behavior, right? There's just more behavioral therapy. There's cognitive stuff. There's some that are more about the emotions and the feelings. But every single field of psychology, and again, there are hundreds of them, they look at some either thought, feeling, behavior, or some combination. And our thoughts, our feelings, our behavior, I mean, that certainly is what lay people think of as our psychology, right? It's our experience of life. Now, they're looking at those things or the combination of those things in order to make a change or a fix, in order to step in and, and look at what's gone wrong and kind of, kind of, you know, enlighten the person that needs it. <laughs> look into like, okay, here's how you could do this differently or here's what happened here. And the funny thing is, even as I say it, it's like, here's what happened here. We can't look at thought, feeling, behavior without looking into the past. Thought, feeling, and behavior is done. By the time we have something to look at and analyze, it's done and over with, and we're on to the next thought, feeling, behavior combination, right? So it's like our experience is constantly moving through us, and we're always just in the flow of that, and things are coming to life, and we're feeling that, and then, it's, then it keeps on moving. It doesn't wait for us. But what traditional psychology does is it like jumps in there and it says, no, let's bring this back. What did you do yesterday? How have you been thinking since you were five? How do you feel? You know, meaning how did you feel a minute ago when we started talking about this? So by definition, it's looking at what is manifest in a person, their thoughts, feelings, or behaviors. And, and those are done and over with by the time we get a chance to look at them. But it's kind of bringing them back and, and analyzing them, in a sense, um, in order for us to understand them better, for us to make sense of them, maybe choose different thoughts, feelings, behaviors in the future. There's a lot of, lot of, of our hand in there, right? We're doing some stuff. We're trying to fix things, trying to make some changes. So this whole medical model of psychology kind of based on the fact that things can go wrong, that we do thoughts, we have thoughts, we have feelings, we do behaviors that, that are problems. Well, if it's a problem, it needs a fix, it's not going to fix itself. So this all makes perfect sense given their understanding of human psychology. Like you even said, Nancy, I don't know, she thinks I don't understand mental disease. Well, I don't understand mental disease either. But they do. <laughs> you know, the people that are studying from this perspective, there is a disease, there's a problem. 
and they're naturally, naturally, if anybody thinks there's a problem, you're going to do something to try to fix it. So where this understanding, all of my work, the three principles, the little school of big change, all of this stuff comes in is completely flipping that on its head and saying, first of all, there are no problems because we are innately healthy. We we don't have diseases. We don't make mistakes. We don't have problem thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. We simply misunderstand them. We think they're problems, and so they become problems. We think they are a mistake. We judge them, you know, but it use, uses more thinking in, in order to do that. So it's like we get a little caught up, but, in, but basically we're saying that we are innately well. People aren't diseased and they don't need anything to be fixed. And we're simply living in the feeling of our moment to moment thinking, which like I was saying, it comes and goes on its own. Why would we need to step in and fix or change a thought or a feeling or a behavior when it's over with by the time we're going to fix or change it, right? Like you just, just look the other way. There's more stuff coming. There's more always coming. If you don't like what you did yesterday, then don't revisit yesterday. But look upstream to what's coming your way because there's new, fresh experience coming all the time. And if you don't like that, then let that go too and keep looking because we are okay and there's nothing that needs to be fixed. So that's why that's why it's a complete flip in many ways to what a lot of traditional psychology is doing. Um, and we aren't looking at thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and try in a way where we're trying to manipulate or change them because why? They're done and over, they fix themselves. What we're looking at is what comes before that. What's there before, bigger than, beyond our thoughts, feelings, behavior? What's up with this crazy system? What's up with this system that's constantly like moving things through us? And some of that stuff is just amazing and wise and we have fresh ideas and, and, you know, like we're looking there in this understanding again with it, it makes sense to look there and it makes sense to not try to fix anything because we don't think you're broken to begin with. We just think we're all feeling lots of thoughts and, and feelings. And yeah, some of them are really painful. Some of them are really out there. Some of them are really destructive. But when you know what they are, when you know it's just thought and feeling moving through you and you don't take it seriously, well, then it's not something you're going to act on in the same way. And it's not going to create that kind of havoc in your life as it is if you take it really seriously and think it says something about your mental health. So that's my little aside just for everyone listening because Nancy's excellent question about, well, my daughter's studying all this traditional stuff and doing her own stuff there, but I really want her to see this. I just want to kind of kind of put out there what that in this is best I can describe it in a few minutes. So, so Nancy, how do you share this with her? First, I think the way we share anything, especially children, <laughs> is to not teach it, not attack what she's doing. And I know you're not, I know you're not doing that, but you know, trying to kind of maybe let her see this in a way that does not at all threaten what she's already been invested in, what she's doing, what makes sense to her, because she's just doing what makes sense to her, right? She's just seeing things and practicing things and studying things because that's what most makes sense to her right now. So of course she's going to do that. And there's not a problem at all with that. So it's like letting her kind of have how she sees things. That's fine. You don't even have to go there. But but at the same time, letting her see this bigger truth, this bigger understanding, maybe just through you. So through your own grounding, through you continuing to get better and better and feel better and have higher well-being and more resilience, because that's what happens for everyone as they come to really see this. That's what people can expect is your own worries and thoughts and anxieties that, that are holding you back start to like just not look so real and they don't hold you back in the same way. And people around you begin to notice. So Nancy, if your daughter is curious about well-being, which she is because she's studying psychology and she sees her mom's well-being going through the roof, hey, there's a great chance she's going to kind of wonder about that, you know, and, you know, being a daughter, like she might 
have a little much too much pride to ask, hey, what's going on, mom? <laughs> are you right? What are you doing? What are those articles you're reading? But that's okay. Just you just do it for yourself. You see this as much as you can, and naturally you're gonna to start to be able to share this in ways that are not teachy and don't have anything to do, you know, they're not threatening what she's doing, but it just comes from you naturally. And people really do get curious about that. Um, you know, again, kind of along those lines, just, just see if she's open to it, having conversations about mental health. Because not many people in traditional psychology or psychiatry are talking about mental health. They're talking about what's wrong. And that's why they're seeing so much of what's wrong. But when we change the conversation, we start talking about mental health, you know, share my, my freedom series. I have a new freedom series coming out in two weeks. It's stories, another five people, five different people than we had back in June who were really seriously caught up in some big stuff. I mean, again, people who were suicidal, planned their suicide, people who were addicted, a man who was addicted to drugs and alcohol for 26 years, um, eating disorders, anxiety, so much anxiety, OCD, so many things that people are really caught up in. And all of these people, and, and hey, I mean, it's easy for me to find five to feature in a freedom series. Like they're all over the place. They, they had an insight and things started to change and they didn't need to get on medication and they didn't, that, not saying that's, that's wrong or bad or anything, but what's an, an interesting conversation to have with her or for any of us to have with anyone is what's up with this? Like, again, we're constantly looking at, oh, we have all these drugs and we have all these interventions. That's okay, fine. But what's up with spontaneous recovery? What's up with someone learning about how their mind works, learning about their true nature and having an insight and suddenly leaving drugs and alcohol behind in an instant after 26 years? Like, this happens. And we're not saying it happens for everyone all the time, but the fact that it happens pretty regularly has to kind of point us in another direction and get us curious about that. I remember when I was first studying psychology, um, a long, I won't say how many years ago, but a while ago, I think I was in like an intro, my intro psych class, right? So freshman year of college. I remember hearing about this study, and I don't know the details, I'm gonna to totally misquote it, but I'll just say it in a nutshell, where they essentially looked at um, a group of people who were going through some different traditional therapies, and I'm guessing they studied a few different ways of treating people. Um, and then they took people with those exact same issues, and they didn't put them through therapy, and they watched these people over time. And again, not getting this perfect, but essentially what I remember hearing from this is that the therapy was helpful for people, but over time, the, the people who didn't have any kind of intervention were pretty much at the same level as the people who had gone through the therapy. And I don't know how long the time is or anything, but in general, like we, we have this natural resilience and we get better. Now, therapy, maybe they got better faster, maybe it was easier, that's great. But I remember as a freshman in college hearing that, and I was, I was super excited to be a therapist, that's totally what I wanted to do, thinking, well, that doesn't make sense. Like, wait, so I'm gonna go to college for nine years for this and do something that really kind of happens naturally for a lot of people? It just doesn't make a lot of sense. And, and I really shortly thereafter changed my focus. I still studied psychology, but I studied more research and social psychology and that, that angle of things. Um, so, so the thing is like that, just, just looking in that direction, it just got my mind changing, you know, it got, got things kind of moving. And I think having those kind of conversations with your daughter, if she's willing to have them and if she's not, that's totally okay, could be really helpful. And the last thing I want to say is just, um, you know, really trust that she's on the right path for her. Like it's to, I know if my kids were, were, you know, in the same situation, I'm sure I'd be wanting to read this, do this, let's talk about this, you know, but, but really kind of, kind of know that we're all doing the best we can and she's just seeing things and making all the choices and doing all the things that make perfect sense to her given how she sees things right now and sometimes we're more open and willing to see things in a new way able to see things in a new way easily 
and sometimes not so much, but that's okay. You know, like I, even me, like I, again, I spent nine years and lots and lots of hard work and lots and lots of money and time studying this in a very traditional way. And I guess that's just what I needed to do. And later on I saw, hey, there's something better. But, you know, we're all just on the path that makes sense for us. I mentor a lot of psychiatrists, psychologists who are wanting to incorporate this in their practice or kind of seeing like, what is up with all that spontaneous recovery stuff? What is up with insights, you know? And some of them have had, you know, really successful practices and it took this long for them to be able to kind of see, huh, maybe there's something else to this, you know? So we're all just doing the best we can and we're all on perfect path. And I think, um, again, especially with our children who we just really want to see them just like, whoop, easy okay you're on your way you know sometimes the path is more like this but it's all right we had those kind of paths too and, and we turned out okay so she's she's doing just fine where she is and and she's really lucky to have you at least knowing this even if she's not open to conversations about it quite yet that's okay again you deepen your grounding and just your presence just your understanding without talking about this explicitly at all is going to help her. It's going to start to open her eyes to different things. So thank you so much for your question, Nancy. Um, I hope that this has been helpful for a lot of people. Thanks so much for listening, guys, and I'll see you back here next Monday.